Hey YouTube, welcome to the sci-fi corner of my channel. Today let's have some fun discussing Star Trek technology, its impulse drive, its warp drive, and the famous photon torpedoes. So stick around till the end and let's get started. So what is this warp? The general concept of warp drive was introduced by John W. Campbell in the Islands of Space, the space drive engine that shattered the intergalactic barriers. And also another mention is from Frederick Brown in Gateway to Darkness. So what is the impulse drive? At first, this impulse drive seems like a precursor to the warp drive and impulse kind of sounds like a rocket engine but a rocket engine it is not the Federation starships were powered by the impulse drives which was essentially an augmented fusion rocket usually consisting of one or more fusion reactors right here you can see the fusion reactors and then there is a driver coil assembly and vector thrust nozzle to direct the plasma coming out. So all these reactors produ produce a plasma that gets into this driver coil assembly and eventually the vector exhaust. And the exhaust is what propels this slower than light engine in this um, Starship. The fusion reaction generated a highly energized plasma and the accelerated plasma was passed through the driver coils thereby generating a subspace field that improved the propulsive effect. So the key to this impulse engine was not just the fact that there is a fusion reaction producing a lot of energy, but also the magic secret sauce, whatever you like to call it, is this driver coil assembly that produces this subspace field. And the subspace field somehow reduces the mass of the ship so that it can achieve these very high speeds, almost reaching speed of light. The driver coil field uh, enveloped the starship in a low energy subspace field intended to lighten the relative mass of the starship it encompasses. This significantly reduced the mass burden on the impulse drive allowing for an unprecedented rate of acceleration. So you see even the slower than light engine used a subspace manipulation to overcome the effects of relativity. And that's another picture of it up close and you can see all the same elements that the subspace field coils and then you can see the subspace field coil driver so accelerators and drivers both and then the expansion nozzle that lets out the subspace compressed plasma the reaction exhaust coming out and then the action reaction coming from the newtonian uh, physics just propels the ship so the difference here uh, why we are not quite there yet on this kind of engine is because it manipulates mass. It's not just an action-reaction principle, it manipulates mass so that the ship appears like a very light or very low mass um, object to this engine. And just to show you where this engine was located, if you ever look at um, USS uh, NCC 1701, you will see two red lights right behind the saucer section right up here. And those lights are essentially the impulse engines that are somewhere here in this section of the saucer and they can power the saucer. The 1701 uh, was not intended for a saucer separation uh, from the remainder of the ship where the engineering was, but in later uh, starships, this separation was a common feature and they could separate under emergency conditions and they can drive separately. And that was only possible because there's this impulse power engine inside the saucer section. All right. And so in this picture, you can see that when the impulse drive is engaged, it's not just exhausting this uh, plasma out the back of the um, ship, but there's also this field and this field um, somehow helps with the mass manipulation of the ship. And that's the key. That's why our rocket technology doesn't quite match the impulse engines of Star Trek. All right, 
So now that we understand the impulse engine, and here you can see this is another uh, neat view that the impulse engine here is visible and um, the exhaust would kind of come here out and then the field somehow is getting generated from right here and it envelops the ship manipulating its mass. All right, so that brings us to the next interesting topic, which is the warp engine. Well, what is the warp engine? The basic functional principle of the warp drive in Star Trek requires a matter-antimatter reactor. The warp core of the reactor generates a high-energy plasma, and then this plasma is transported to the warp field generators via lines or conduits. These generators are effectively coils in the warp nacelles protruding from the spaceship. So these nacelles might be somewhere further away in the back here, further away from the ship. And that is where the magic happens, where this subspace field is generated and the warp nacelles generate this field and also kind of known as the warp bubble and which distorts space time and propels the bubble and the spaceship forward. So you can see this was um, a huge improvement over the impulse engine and the speeds that this can achieve are way beyond what the impulse engine can achieve. It is also known as the faster than light engine. And just to understand what the warp scale is, the measure of the speed of the starship where how fast you're traveling compared to the speed of light. And Gene Roddenberry commissioned Michael Akuda to invent a revised warp scale where warp one is the speed of light, but warp 10 is absolute limit. You cannot cross that limit, it's infinite speed. And in homage to Gene Roddenberry, this limit was called the Eugene limit. So here you can see this field in one of the um, pictures on the, on the deck. You can see the two sh uh, spaceships coming closer and you can see the warp field around. This warp field or warp bubble is what carries the starship, protects the starship, and while it's traveling at such high speeds, it protects it from the effects of relativity, time, and um, mass that might come into picture here. So you're safe from all those things. And that's the magic of the warp drive. And here you can see that another picture, the warp bubble, and the warp bubble, the spaceship's kind of sitting inside and the spaceship is not really moving, it's the bubble that moves and carries the spaceship with it. And therefore all the acceleration that might be coming off traveling at warp doesn't really affect the insides of the spaceship because it's really protected and still inside this bubble. All right, so the next up is the topic of photon torpedoes. A photon torpedo is a weapon of choice in, in Star Trek when they're trying to uh, destroy another ship or damage it pretty badly. And it's a torpedo uh, that is an energy part of matter and antimatter separated by a, a magnophoton force field. Try saying that twice, magnophoton force field. They can be fired directly as torpedoes laid in a minefield or scatter an enemy's path like a space depth charge. The components, the components of Federation photon torpedo were contained within an elongated elliptical casing, also known as a photon tube. You can see that here. This is the tube, and then it contains um, the warhead, which is essentially the matter antimatter, which is mixed in this intermixed chamber, and it's a controlled, um, I guess, combination or mixing that produces the detonation and the torpedo um, then explodes eventually and creates a, a flood of energy and deadly ion radiation destroying whatever is uh, being attacked in this situation. When fired by a galaxy class starship without shields at a target in close range, a single photon detonation has a probability of destroying the firing ship as well. So it's pretty dangerous. When you fire this thing, you better be far away from it because it could destroy, if you're firing, it could destroy your ship as well. So 
Now that we come to the end of this video, I guess my question would be, what do you guys think about the achievability of all these technologies? The warp technology, the impulse technology, by as soon as 2063 in Star Trek. Um, do you think that's likely? I would say that's unlikely. And if you say it's likely, leave me some comments. What do you think about these ideas? Right? It seems incredibly um, unbelievable that we can travel to other galaxies and um, other star systems and in a matter of you know minutes or hours we can travel that fast that far so to end this my friends I would say live long and prosper till we meet again and don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you energize one quarter impulse power Mr. Sulu we are out of here Bye-bye.